open phones for the next 30 minutes and a bunch of news interspersed. And Dr. Paul Craig Roberts joins us. I've been saying with the debt ceiling in the last month that Obama is openly making noises about using Civil War reconstruction powers to nix the power of Congress and take the power of the purse. Now they're confirming that. Dim lawmaker, nobody I know has seen the Reid plan. Democratic leader in House urges Obama to raise debt ceiling without congressional approval. Uh, well, Congress controls the purse. I mean, this is, but he launches wars without congressional approval. Why not? He's got the ATF telling gun shops about new rules that aren't law. Why not? Obama secretly signals to banks no default, threatens veto of House plan. Uh, if election was held today, Obama would lose in landslide. These stories are all up at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. ATF manager says he shared Fast and Furious info with White House. Italian, Spanish bonds drop on concern. European aid may not be high enough. Gold strikes new record high. Uh, that's just some of the news we're going to be breaking down. TSA agents uh, poses as cop to harass woman. A new video out of a woman begging and pleading as they grab her breast and genitals. Uh, incident highlights concerns about federal agency becoming domestic security force. Oh, yeah, they're already at parades and things. They have weird little hitler Yugen Boy Scouts out ordering adults around. I mean, we're entering the vortex of, of a cross between uh, Nazi Germany and Soviet Russia. And it always happens everywhere else. It's happening here. Folks are going to get hurt real bad. A lot of folks will cowardly admit to themselves we're in a tyranny and run groveling to the system. Whew, we could just wake up and say no to all this and legalize the Constitution and legalize freedom and it'd all be over. But you know what? Folks got to get hurt real bad first. Well, you're going to get hurt. I'm going to get hurt. Folks on fixed incomes with inflation are getting hurt. The lying liars say, hey, there's no inflation. <laughs> we're in a great economy, too. Uh, Steve in New York, you're on the air. Thanks for holding. Welcome. Alex, three points. First, I want to, uh, I want to let you know that how grateful we are, uh, for you and you're in our prayers every evening. Thank you. Um, uh, the, the first point is there's a snake in a wood pile when it comes to Steve Pachenik. Uh, second, uh, we've spotted drones in remote parts of New York. And oh, more they admit, you've got uh, drones all over you, and they've got uh, high atmosphere uh, blimps, body scanning. Uh, they've got uh, heat resonance scanners. Oh, yeah. I mean, the military industrial complex makes money while they bankrupt the country, putting their slave grid in. Sorry, go ahead. No, that's quite all right. Um, yeah, um, and when it comes to drones, I am a veteran. Uh, I've died once. I'm not afraid to die again. Um, I'm not going to give up this fight. You've ignited a passion that has since been long dormant in me for our republic. And most importantly, the third point is on YouTube. I don't know if you have covered this. Uh, I've discovered it by doing my, doing my research, as you, as you uh, um, recommend to people. And I've uncovered a video called Damning Revelation. I don't know if you've covered this, but it covers... Eight times from 2003 to 2008 that members of Congress tried to modify the Constitution, Article 2, Section 8, Clause 5, natural born citizen. Uh, yes, sir. I, I am aware that they've been introducing it over and over again to get rid of the 22nd Amendment uh, and to allow Schwarzenegger, they first said, was the reason what in 2004 was one reason they were pushing it. And every month now, they try to originate spending bills in the Senate and just set the precedent. They are criminals. They are assaulting every check and balance to block them. And, uh, you know, I haven't died like a lot of people have and, and come back. They say that really makes you not fear death and really gives you more of the sense, as they say it. But I have almost died repeatedly. And I tell you, it does make you not fear death as much. Uh, what, did you die in combat and were, and were resuscitated? Yes. That's amazing. Um, all right, we'll be right back. Stay with us. You know, people who don't believe in God, I feel sorry for them. They haven't had the experiences that some of us have had. But look at the universe all around us. We're on a planet hurtling through space around a big sun. Our eyes, our senses only see a very narrow band of a spectrum 
that mathematics and quantum physics have, have proven. And I talked to so many people like Dr. Dr. Paul Craig Roberts is coming up, Colonel Craig Roberts, uh, who died for uh, 10 minutes, died repeatedly, and uh, was completely dead for 10 minutes. And they most people can't survive six minutes or even four minutes. Most people have brain death in four and a half minutes. And, you know, his guardian angel there with his hand on him, uh, the decision to send him back. And then they go into other cultures, even with native tribes in New Guinea and places and major studies that were conducted by atheist uh, groups uh, and, and secular scientists. And a lot of them then get spiritual because they, they've done these uh, uh, experiences with near death or death experiences. And every culture has the same thing. The portal of light, the guardian angel that's there with their hand on your shoulder that you know has been there your whole life. The imaginary friend when you're a kid. Uh, it's recorded everything you've done. Um, and then the decision to be sent back or people that have been going the other direction. <laughs> uh, and then get sent back. Uh, boy, let me tell you. And uh, the reason I raised that, you may have not heard the last caller. Steve is a veteran who was a... Uh, shot in combat and died and was resuscitated. And he was saying he doesn't fear death now uh, because of it. I had a story, uh, you know, a story I've told. Um, and I'm, I'm not even going to get into it today. I mean, the point is, is that um, there are certain events in your life that change you forever and that really give you a window into things. And I guess a lot of folks aren't awake to that. They're not attuned to that. They just don't know. Okay, I said I'm taking your calls. Uh, there is just so much incredible news. Uh, there is just a huge fight uh, in D.C. over the uh, raising the debt limit. We're going to be breaking it down with Dr. Paul Craig Roberts coming up here in about 25 minutes. Uh, we now have new dictators in this country. It's the private rating agencies uh, that have already been lying for a long time and uh, telling us that we're not defunct and that we haven't really lost our AAA rating. But the fact is they've already defaulted on the quality of the dollar. They've already defaulted on treasury bonds that are denominated in dollars. And they're transferring that default onto the American people with uh, purchasing power being destroyed. And it's already wreaking havoc. And as the economy shuts down, as people have less money because it's all going to gas and fuel and food, it will kill every other sector of the economy. And this has all been planned. That's what's so frustrating is that we told you exactly what they would do. When they got rid of Glass-Steagall, they've done the same thing in third world countries. These banks take over. And it, it's they are waging war against wealth, against the free market. They are monopoly men. And the Republicans are debating, oh, we want to make some cuts. And the cuts they want to make are to entitlements. Now, I'm against entitlements because it makes you dependent. And it gets you on the government largesse. And now the government, owned by foreign banks, run by foreign banks, hijacked by foreign banks is the proper way to put it. Uh, puppeteered by the foreign banks, it's probably even more specific, they know exactly what they're doing. And now Obama can get up and say 80 million of you depend on checks every uh, two weeks. And if you don't raise the debt ceiling and if you don't go deeper into debt, we're going to lose our AAA rating and go bankrupt. And that's true. But if you do continue to spend more, we'll go even more bankrupt when we go completely bankrupt. So they're just getting us deeper and deeper into it like a crack dealer uh, with an addict. And we're being brought into bondage. We've been signed on to the thousands of trillions, over a thousand, five hundred trillion uh, that, that we don't owe. Remember, too big to fail, that's the debt. And so the Republicans are saying cut Social Security, uh, cut welfare, uh, cut all the, you know, and sure, great, get rid of the Department of Education, get rid of all this. Still, you could cut it all. If we don't say no to the derivatives, nothing. You could cut everything, it won't fix anything. But they're going to get the public by, well, just give us half your pension fund. And if you don't give us half the pension fund, uh, then you'll get nothing. Same thing's been done in Argentina and Costa Rica and Nigeria and Greece and Ireland. And I told you it was coming because six years ago, uh, was it in 2005, they changed the rules so they could take private pension funds public pension funds, and then they sell everybody that, well, you don't, you don't deserve your, your, your government pension fund. Well, sure, it, it, it may be a form of government largesse and has helped bankrupt things, but the point is, if you set the precedent where you can start taking people's pension funds, they're going to take private too, and now they're talking about that. Oh, the government will take over pension funds, they say, to protect them.
And then the more they protect us with banker bailouts, the further we get down this rat hole, the worse things get. And the Republicans are not telling you that unless it's Ron Paul or Rand Paul. They're not telling you that. They're going with the banker plan of austerity, cutting all the services and letting the taxes be kept the same or raised. And then the lion's share of the money goes to the bankers who created the fraudulent debt and are the criminals. Now, I know the listeners know this, but we've got to get this out to everybody. And so we're being held hostage by the ratings agencies saying, you raise the debt ceiling or we will lower your credit rating. And, and, the, and these rating agencies are openly run by the big six banks. <laughs> we're in a lot of trouble here. And it just absolutely boggles my mind that this is happening. And uh, we'll be talking to Dr. Roberts about the fact that they're now saying, hey, don't worry. Um, the president will just do this on his own, just like he launched the wars on his own. And that's now in the news today. The president just doing it and saying Congress doesn't matter. All right, let's go ahead and uh, talk to Ezekiel in Kentucky, Dan, Otter, Brent, and Sarah. Go ahead, Ezekiel. It's good to talk to you. I'm a Marine Corps veteran. I've been listening to you since 9-11, and I'm glad to finally get to talk to you. Good to have you on, sir. Um, Welcome. You, you really, I've got my glasses on, Alex. We sleep, they live. There's a, something I wanted to talk Two things I wanted to bring up. One, one was my experience in the Marine Corps with vaccinations, and the other is the uh, Norway shooting. But the, with the vaccinations, there were, I was looking at my medical record, and I've got a series of vaccinations that I cannot figure out what they are. There's no name on it. It's just a string of numbers I've been trying to figure out. I can't get any answers. And I remember one particular incident where uh, right after uh, I was vaccinated the, the night of, woke up in the middle of the night and the barracks and my eyes were encrusted just to what I couldn't open them and they were secreting some weird green crap and I had to have someone help me to the head. My eyes out and I had a metallic taste in my mouth for weeks after that. There was other people who experienced the same thing. And, I had uh, Rick I Perry in 2007, Rick Perry's chief of media came to, to Endgame and he goes, Alex, Rick Perry's a good man. And he was a clean cut, nice guy, didn't get a bad vibe off of him, but almost got like a mind control vibe. He goes, but I want you to know, I know this film's real. And, you know, Rick's not a bad guy. The governor wants you to know he's a good guy. And I went and looked the guy up later. He gave me his card. He really was who he said he was. And I'd since seen him on TV at press conferences with Perry. And he said, I was a medic at Fort Sam Houston. And uh, they, they brought troops in from Fort Bragg. We were ordered to inject them, and they all died, Alex. And then we had to disinfect the entire uh, medical area. He said, so I know something. And I go, why don't you get the governor to talk about that? Meanwhile, the governor came out six months later and announced forced inoculations for uh, Texas schoolgirls. And it turned out he didn't have the power to do it and had to back off. But, I mean, creepy. I mean, you know, creepy. This guy tells me, works for Rick Perry, that he was a medic a decade before and watched the government kill troops that they sent from Fort Bragg down to be murdered at Fort Sam Houston Medical uh, uh, Division. There's admitted thousands of tests radiating, nerve gassing our troops, Project Shad, injecting little kids with syphilis. You know, Hillary just had to apologize for that a few months ago. Uh, the UN's caught every year giving kids live polio. Just search UN polio shots kill kids. And still, we trust the government. We still join the military. And yes, sir, uh, I don't mean to scare you, but and there's ways to try to detox it and things. But what they do is they inject you with all sorts of soft kill. And uh, my God, it's just hellish when you look at the what they do to the troops. See, they know you're going to wake up later. And so they test all sorts of crud on you. Uh, and, and of course, that's come out. But I'm, I'm sorry, I'm ranting. Uh, what do the other Marines think about this? Are, are they concerned? Uh, you, there's two types of veterans when you come home. You either continue to go to sleep or you start to wake up and the ones who wake up are the ones that they believe are going to be the terrorists because we, we've we caught them. We, we know what they've done to us. But I've had for, uh, other veteran friends who uh, develop schizophrenia from from the military. Um, but, well, you know heavy metals are the number one cause of schizophrenia. That's why they had the term. It, it, most schizophrenia is a chemical reaction, a chemical allergy to mercury and, and uh, lead as well. And that's why they had the saying, mad as a hatter. You know, because the guys that did the uh, weaving of the hats, they were doing it with mercury. And yes, uh, that's one big issue with the mental illness exploding. And instead of telling you to detox, they put you on toxic drugs. 
sure. They want to treat you with more poison. 